Hello, I'm Rachel Flores, and today I'm here with Michael Longhofer. Thanks for having us in your space. You're welcome. Um, so I'm just going to ask you a couple of questions. We really want to know more about you. And so where did you even grow up? I actually was born in Dumas, Texas, believe it or not. And then uh, my dad got transferred here, and so I actually grew up here in Amarillo. Cool, very cool. So what got, got you started in art? What made you become an artist? Well, I was always drawn as a little kid. Okay. And me and my brother would like have competitions and hand it to my father to see which one was the best. He uh -huh. never would say which one was the best. And I've just always been a drawer, always doodling, you know. So that's kind of where it started okay. as a kid. Cool. And I took a couple old painting classes when I was okay. younger. Did you have any role models growing up that kind of helped you? No, in fact, everyone told me I'd never make a living at it. Oh, no. <laughs> Don't do it. No, seriously. Thanks for so, not Except for my to grandma. Them. Except for my grandpa, okay. which he noticed it right off the bat. He told me cool. I should do something with it. Very cool. When I was in like junior high. So you said that you, you took some classes, mm -hmm. but um, where else have you studied? Well, I went in the military, left Amarillo, and when I was in the military, I did a lot of uh, work for those guys. They all would pull me out of certain duties in order to either me to paint a chow hall wall mm -hmm. or do drawings of like military drawings mm -hmm. of, of either helicopters or airplanes and stuff. Okay. And then that's when I really knew like, okay, I'm going to get serious about it. So as soon as I got out, I decided to go to art school. Cool. So you just kind of practiced and got better and better and then decided that that was mm -hmm. really the And my warrant officer actually wrote letters. Because wow. you had to have letters of recommendation to get me into the school, which you don't really think of right. the military and art right. going together, but yeah, you just never know. That's so. fantastic. Well, so you, when we look at your art, you obviously have some subject matter that you kind of like over other things. So tell us a little bit about that. What what inspires you? What kind of makes you you paint the way that you do? Well, at first, I was my my kind of niche was cityscapes. I kind of just fell mm -hmm. into it. I'd be driving late at night and see the perspective of the road mm -hmm. and either the sun going down and the lighting and the neon signs I always was fascinated with mm -hmm. kind of the the glow that right at like sunset yes. or morning so I did that for probably 10 years that was pretty much my subject matter and then I started incorporating figures into the into the cityscapes mm -hmm. and then now I've kind of I'm kind of morphing them together yes. combining them together tell us a little bit about that because I really love what you're doing uh, in the project that you're kind of working on right now. And so is that kind of where you, you got it, is that you love cityscapes, and mm -hmm. then as you started including figures, you thought, why not combine them? Well, I was, you know, I'm working on my thesis right now, mm -hmm. and I had to come up with, you know, the, the main paragraph, what it's going to be about. Mm -hmm. And first I was going to do just landscapes. And I thought, well, how boring, and it's been done a billion times. Yes. And then... I had to retake figure drawing again, working on my master's. I hadn't hadn't did that like in 10 years. Mm -hmm. And then as soon as I started drawing again, I kind of re-fell in love with the actual nude model in front of you. Because mm -hmm. to me, it's the hardest thing to draw of anything mm -hmm. or paint, you know, because you can't yeah. take a photo and you use the grid pattern or trace it off. Right. It's, it's, there's no cheating, you know. So that's kind of where they the ideas kind of morph together. Mm -hmm. So I'm calling it fusion. So... Tell us a little bit about your undergrad experience. Where did you go and kind of where did you go after that? I went to uh, Laguna College of Art and Design. Okay. It's actually almost dead center between Los Angeles and San Diego. Perfect artist community. You know, you have Wyland Studios, which are there. And I mean, the whole town is, it's mostly like ocean kind of kitschy paintings, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. the art school's kind of tucked back in the canyon. It's real small cool. and at the time, I didn't want to go to a university. I wanted mm -hmm. to do just an art school that was a four-year degree. So that was my choice. Okay. And now you're in grad school. Now I'm in grad school. I waited 15 years, 10 years between. Um, I did a lot of freelance work okay. as a commercial artist and then worked as an art director for like totally uh, either Photoshop or Illustrator, mostly okay. Adobe type software packages, designing print web, you know, mostly, like I said, commercial stuff. Okay. And then I kept painting on the side. And so why wait? Why wait so long? You know, a lot of people go in their 20s, they go to undergrad, they go to grad school, they get it all done. 
is there a value, do you feel like, to waiting as long as you did to go to grad school? And Well, at first I got discouraged. I applied to UT, which would only take like three people every four <laughs> years. It's like super hard to get in, and I got denied. That was like in 98. And okay. so I was so mad about that because I was I actually, when they called me, I was like, do you realize you're, who you're turning down here? <laughs> I was so cocky at the time. I really was. Do you realize what mistake you've made? So I had kind of had a grudge for a while, and I was like, fine, I'll just paint paintings and mm -hmm. show in galleries on my own. And so that's what I did. And then I started teaching and doing workshops. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I'd actually like to teach college level. And the, the main way to teach college level, you have to have a master's degree. You can't. Plus, right. it doesn't hurt as far as like the really big time galleries like in New York. Mm -hmm. And they won't even look at you unless you have a master's mm -hmm. degree. So. But you, you are interested in teaching at, at the higher education level. Oh, sure. Level, yeah, and of course. that's kind of your mm -hmm. ultimate. I was running out of my, my own ideas were stagnant. Like, I just was like, I, don't, I was so reliant on the photograph and shooting a great shot and just painting what I basically photographed. I needed to somehow have an idea behind that whole thing. And so mm -hmm. that is what probably has helped the most of the whole experience is just getting my brain yeah. set in a different direction and being challenged by somebody, you know? Well, and I think that that's a really good point because that's kind of why we go to school in general is to have people challenge us to do new things that maybe we're not used to. And it's great that you saw the value in that. And tell us a little bit about the progression of your art. Do you feel like you've seen it change from start to, to where you're at now? Oh yeah, yeah, a lot. I mean, I think a good like contemporary artist, if you crack up in the history books, they always are like trying to change a little bit mm -hmm. instead of just discovering something that works and then do you just keep doing that for the rest of your life? For me, I can't paint the same, like right now for my thesis, I still have to e maybe paint the same model twice. Mm -hmm. That even bugs me, painting something mm -hmm. twice. So I'm always trying to move on, you know? So if you knew then what you know now, what would you do differently? I would have probably changed a long time ago. And I would have started, I would have started hiring li live models. I've always kind of been like, oh, I can't afford a live model. Mm -hmm. They're too expensive, but they're so much better. Mm -hmm. Like a real person. I, like right now, I'm totally trying to not like just Google an image or right. look it up on the internet or get it off a of stock photography site. I'm trying to shoot all my own reference mm -hmm. so it's mine from the get-go, from the ground up. Interesting. Starts with the sketch and the idea, then it goes into, okay, how can I actually execute? Mm -hmm. Whether it be a model or, and with me retaking sculpture, I'm also learning to um, sculpt it. And when you sculpt something, you can draw it out of your head because you've studied it right. way more. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're sculpting either the buttocks or the, the chest or the breast or the head, and you really learn that object because you're making it over mm -hmm. and over again. Mm -hmm. Good. We haven't really talked about career experience. Okay. Which that's another thing about waiting to work on the masters is that how to deal with the client is a pain. Like you really People will try to change the design or the work. Get their, they want to get their fingers in there and mm -hmm. say, oh, well, I'm the one that, like you'd say you, you give them a perfect illustra sh illustration, for example, of like, let's say it's a dining scene of two people having dinner. They'll be like, oh, can you change his shirt to pink? Or you can you change her pants uh, to, yeah. just not because it's really going to make the piece right. better, but I think it's just that they have to get their fingers and it's a control yeah. issue, you know? Yeah, she was kind of an accident character. Well, first I had her when I, you know, they were like, you need some new ideas, Michael. Your ideas are too trite. They're too boring. And so I had this, this hitchhiker girl in my mind. It was my character that I kind of created. First I had her with a wine bottle, like standing by the side of the road. Then I had her on a deer. And I had her, like, doing all these crazy things, mm -hmm. robbing a liquor store with, like, an AK-47. <laughs> and So tell us, what, what would you say are your favorite pieces of artwork that you've done? Well, my first cityscapes, favorites? which is that little small print over there, the one that's called Fire Sky. Mm -hmm. It was probably my first good painting, like, and the subject matter was edgy. Mm -hmm. I always try to have, I like edgy subject matter, meaning that I don't want someone to, like, walk in a gallery and go, oh, I've seen that, that same painting, but right. by a different artist over here. Yes. Like, I didn't want to be 
either a copying anyone or doing the same you know there's sure there's a lot of cityscape painters out of there mm -hmm. out there but I kind of want to have my own spin right. on mine was more of the perspective as if you're like literally sitting in the driving driver's seat more than like if you're the bystander on the side of the road right. you know I love that piece it's a great piece so that was probably one of the first ones there's okay. another one called boys on the pier which my, my mom my mom has a print of it that some guy in Florida bought it but that's where it's at but mm -hmm. those are the first two good pieces Mm -hmm. that really, I thought I was good when I got out of art school, and then I got some um, portrait commissions, mm -hmm. and I really, they kicked my butt, and I'm like, I'm actually not that really good, I'm not really that good. <laughs> so I would just lock myself in the bedroom, and just would paint for like at least eight hours a day to really like start like honing right. the cuz you know painting isn't talent anymore paint there's a talent factor to it mm -hmm. it's a skill once you get to the certain level it's skill mm -hmm. it's like learning anything else and so i needed to master the skill before i wanted to really put myself out there did you one thing that we haven't talked about is is the medium that you use is there a reason that that you kind of went the route that you you went, I mean, I know you took some oil painting classes, but now a lot of your stuff is done in acrylics. Is that just, you know, you found that it really lent itself to the subject matter or the way that you like to paint? No, actually I had, well, they, they were a big pusher of gouache in art mm -hmm. school and I absolutely hated gouache. It dries fast, it looks flat, but it kind of works the same way as acrylic and I hated acrylic. I hated acrylic too, I hated them both. That's why I like oil, because you can keep blending it. Mm -hmm. It's blender friendly, so I can, Two hours later, if I want to blur a cloud, I can come back in and right. blur a cloud. Acrylic, uh-uh. Mm -hmm. So I got a, a mural gig, just doing a little cheesy mural in a church, I think it was, or just a, it was more of a backdrop for mm -hmm. like a play. And you can't use oil paint, you know, because it has to be fast and quick. Mm -hmm. And so that's kind of where I started to transition into acrylic. And so you I'd have it. to paint everything really graphically at the time because I didn't really know how to blend it yet. Mm -hmm. And then as I kept using it, I kept getting better at it. And then I was like, this is actually a pretty good media. Once you figure That's it out, neat. you know, it's, it's, a, it's a good media. And it's fast, it's quick. Mm -hmm. And the quality of the colors, you can, I mean, I'll, I can clear coat an acrylic and put it next to an oil and ask the average Joe to tell me which one is an oil painting and which one is mm -hmm. an acrylic painting. And they won't be able to tell mm -hmm. unless they're flipping over on the back and they really know, you know. Interesting. Very cool. Well, so is there any advice that you would give to artists today since you're, you've been around for a while? Um, well, don't quit. I've quit art like three times. Like just, <laughs> went, I don't want to deal with it no more, you know, or whatever. Got discouraged because somebody told, told me I wasn't very good or I actually would cold call galleries that told me to get out. Mm -hmm. We only take portfolios on Tuesday and Wednesday of every mm -hmm. fourth month of the, you know, they always have some like trick that, mm -hmm. so they don't get too many portfolios. But yeah, don't ever quit. Or if you do quit, do a different media maybe and get okay. away from that media for a while and then come back to it. That helps. Uh, that's one of, that's probably the main one. So um, another thing I would tell someone is don't get a big head because if you get a big head, it just messes everything up. You're either rude to people or you can't really evaluate your work honestly, mm -hmm. you know, if you think that you're better than everyone else. Makes sense. So, you know, talking about artists that inspire us and artists inspire you, were there certain ones that you kind of kind of lean towards whenever you're you're doing your work? Yeah, for me it was uh, the first one was Wayne Tebow. Um, he's a he was a sixties pop artist. Mm -hmm. He's probably in his nineties now. Uh, he was um, he's the chair of painting at uh, UC Davis okay. um, and his paintings for him for me for it wasn't about he, that I thought he was a great drawer mm -hmm. I thought he was a great draftsman like Da Vinci or someone mm -hmm. for me it's his color and it's layering of paint it's amazing he has the most amazing color on the planet so mm -hmm. and he actually gave the commencement speech uh, at my undergrad and then I actually saw him That's do cool. a live demo That's of a portrait neat. with a live model in front mm -hmm. of him and when I saw how he started, he would start yeah. with like just a crazy bright red canvas. That's kind of where I've, 
I've went with my wow. stuff. So. Well, I think if we all yeah. had the opportunity to actually watch some of the artists that we... Yeah, and his pieces go for at the Kimball, like he had a show at the Kimball probably three or four years ago, like a million dollars for wow. one painting. So yeah, he's crazy. In That's fact, really if you amazing. Google top selling artists, he's like number two in the list under Rouché. So Rouché is cool. another one that's, yeah. it's a living artist that's, you know, if you want to buy a painting, it's the most expensive painting out wow. there. You know. Very neat, very neat. So, is there anything else that we've missed that you'd like to tell us? Yeah, I'd like to thank my parents for being supportive. They've been really supportive. There have been, you know, ups and downs, but now that they've kind of seen um, either me do a show or get a show or win a contest or whatever, mm -hmm. um, their support has been super awesome. It's important. Yeah. Good. Well, thanks so much for talking to us. And I appreciate you having me. Uh, we had fun. It's awesome. I'm Rachel Flores. Thanks for watching All Things Artful. We'll see you next time.